right now you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise team, just continue doing what you're doing. Continue doing what you're doing. So this is my final week of this four-part series. I'm going to try not to do the dance because this has been a lengthy one. <laughs> Amen. I give God all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise for allowing me to serve in his house. Our theme for this year is wake up and strengthen what remains. Our topic, awakening your divine blueprint, purpose unlocked. A pleasant good morning. To all of you, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, to our senior pastor and his beautiful wife, Lady Lisa Knowles, thank you for giving me this opportunity to serve in my father's house. To my husband, Pike Knowles, and all of the ministers of the gospel and their wives, I greet you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And to my parents, Oh, I love my parents. I thank God for mommy and daddy. As old as I am, the example that they set from I was a child to now has left an indelible mark on my life. And so I always tell people, I know what love is. I know what real love is because I grew up in it with my mom and my dad. And so I know what a healthy friendship, partnership, relationship looks like because they were the example from that day to this. And so to my parents, I honor you and I thank God every day that he gave you to me, amen. From the onset of this series, I started by saying, let us take a look at the laws of personal success from a kingdom perspective. I went on to say that success is something that every human wants. Everybody wants to succeed. But for you to succeed in life, there are five questions you must answer. I further stated that these five questions control the human race. These five questions motivate everything we do. In week one of this four-part series, we answered the question of, who am I? In week two, we answered, where am I from and why am I here? In week three, we answered, what can I do? And in this final week of this series, we conclude with where am I going? Where am I going? This is a question of destiny. In all reality, I actually grappled a little bit with this topic because I did not know which angle God was going to use me to take it from. I sat with my mom and we shared a good, sweet laugh. I said, girl, where am I going? I need to let the people know where we are going. So she said, child, you better figure it out before Sunday. You know, her mouth smart sometimes, you know. She said, you better figure it out before Sunday where we go in. Because you cannot tell the people where we are going if you don't know the way. So that was the biggest joke. We, it was just a joke. So I pick up my purse and I put on my shoes. And I said, well, anywho, I going home. That's where I'm going, because I, I know the way there. I know how to get there. I didn't think anything of it, 
more than just another good laugh with mommy until about Wednesday, Wednesday night, right before Bible study. Just hit me. The reality is that if I don't know where I am going, then how do I lead you through this portion of the message? If I don't know the way to our final destination, how do I lead you through the pathway? Harriet Tubman was a slave who found her way using the Underground Railroad to get to freedom. After finding her way to freedom, she decided to go back and lead as many people who wanted to be led to freedom through the same path that she followed, the Underground Railroad. Just like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, she wanted that all be free. But she could only free those who participated in their own rescue. But the persons that she freed became free because they themselves desired freedom. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to John chapter 14. And we're going to stand. And we're going to read all 31 verses. So please stand with me. Let's go to John chapter 14. And it reads, and if you all don't read loud, the baby's going to drown us out. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way, you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my Father, verse 13, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live, you live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in him. 
He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I am going to the Father. For my Father is greater than I. We're almost there. And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me, last verse, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let us go from him. The word of the Lord is always blessed. Amen. You may be seated. I just want you to reiterate for me, um, tech team, verse 3. Because the question is, where are we going? Where am I going? Where are we going? Verse 3 says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Amen. Where am I going? Where are we going? What is our final destination? One word, home. Now, don't be scared. Ain't nobody going to die today. But our final destination is home. Whether we like it or not, believe it or not, or accept it or not, the reality is, that we are all visitors here. Whether we travel for vacation, work, or education, at some point, we will have to pack our bags and return to the land of our citizenship because our time is up. And to stay past your time is illegal. And so for whatever purpose you travel, you must be careful to fulfill it in the time frame given. Because when your time is up, it is up. You got to go home to the land of your citizenship. Don't believe me? Go to America and stay too long. And see if immigration and border and customs and all them people don't come looking for you. Philippians 3 and 20 in the New King James Version says, For our citizenship is in heaven, 
from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. According to scripture, we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven, not earth. So to help you find your way home, I'm going to give you five things to put on your checklist. I want you to pull those slides up for me. And I want you to take some notes. Travel checklist item number one. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. That is Acts 16 and 31. Acts 16, 31 says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. This verse highlights the foundational step in preparing to go home to be with the Lord. Faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It encapsulates the core of the Christian message. Salvation is a gift of grace accessed through faith. And it extends beyond individuals to their families, influencing and transforming whole households. To prepare for eternal life with the Lord, believers must first accept Jesus, acknowledge him as the son of God who died for their sins and rose again. This faith is not just an intellectual agreement, but rather a deep trust and reliance on Christ for salvation. Through this belief, believers receive forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life. Beyond initial belief, preparation involves living out that faith daily. This means pursuing a relationship with God through prayer, worship, and scripture growing in spiritual maturity. It also involves repentance, turning away from sin and seeking to live in a way that honors God. Believers are also called to share the gospel with others as seen in the promise of household salvation, ensuring that they not only prepare themselves, but also help others come to the faith. Faith in Christ marks the beginning of the journey toward eternal life with God. Amen. Let's go to travel checklist item number two. Understand that there is only one way home to the Father, and that is through his Son. John 14 and 6. John 14 and 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This powerful statement by Jesus reveals the exclusive path to eternal life and outlines how believers can prepare to go home to be with the Lord. First, Jesus declares, that he is the way. To prepare for eternity, believers must recognize that salvation comes only through a personal relationship with Jesus. This means accepting him as savior and following his example in daily life. Jesus' way is one of love, service, sacrifice, and obedience to God. Believers must embrace his teachings and model their lives after his, walking in faith and righteousness. Second, Jesus is the truth. In a world filled with conflicting ideologies, believers must ground themselves in the truth of who Christ is and what he accomplished on the cross. 
Preparation involves growing in the knowledge of God's word, aligning one's thoughts and actions with biblical principles, and standing firm against false teachings that lead people away from the truth of Christ. Third, Jesus is the life. Through him, believers receive eternal life, both in the present and in the future. Preparing to be with the Lord means experiencing spiritual renewal and abundant life through the Holy Spirit. It requires living with an eternal perspective, knowing that this life is temporary. But eternal life with Christ is the ultimate goal. Ultimately, believers prepare for their heavenly home by walking in the way of Jesus, holding to the truth of his word, and living in the life-giving power of his spirit. Let's go to travel checklist item number three. Trust in God and his promises. If God said it, that settles it. If you find it in the written word of God, if you find it in the graphe, you can rest your head and cash that in the bank. God said it, that settles it. I believe it. In John 14, 1, Jesus comforts his disciples by telling them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This verse underscores the importance of trusting in God, especially in times of uncertainty and difficulty. As people prepare for their eternal home with the Lord, trust becomes the foundation of their spiritual journey. Faith in God's promises brings comfort and assurance knowing that he is in control and that his plans are for good, not harm. Trusting in God means surrendering anxieties, fears, and doubts, acknowledging that he has already prepared a place for those who believe in him. It's about relying on his wisdom rather than our own understanding. This trust is built through prayer, regular reading of scripture, and reflecting on God's faithfulness in the past. By focusing on God's eternal promises, Individuals can live with peace and purpose, even in the face of life's challenges. This deepened trust transforms their perspective, shifting from earthly concerns to heavenly assurance, giving them the strength to endure trials and remain faithful. Ultimately, trusting in God is the heart's preparation for an eternal relationship with him. Amen. Travel checklist item number four of five, because I only did five. Live in obedience to Christ's teaching. Have you ever heard that obedience is better than sacrifice? Live in obedience. That's what God wants from us, our obedience to his word. In John 14 and 15, Jesus emphasizes the connection between love and obedience, saying, if you love me, it's not a matter of saying, oh God, I love you, Father, I love you. No, he says, no, if you really really and truly love me, keep my commandments. 
living in obedience to Christ's teaching is a fundamental way to express love and devotion to him. That is how we show God we love him, by being obedient to his word. It involves not only adhering to his moral instructions, but also embodying the values he lived by. Love, humility, forgiveness, and selflessness. Obedience is not a burden, but a response to the grace and love that Christ has shown through his sacrifice. As people prepare to meet the Lord, living in obedience becomes an ongoing process of transformation. It requires aligning one's life with the will of God and letting go of selfish desires. Jesus' teachings focus on loving others as he had loved us, which means forgiving those who have wronged us. Forgiveness is not for them. It's for you. And sometimes people have done some things that is just so wrong. That is just so wrong. And what is God saying that you have to do? Forgive. Sometimes it may feel like a hard pill to swallow. Every one of us in this room has been in a place in our lives where we know we were right and the other person was wrong and that other person, we feel like they even ain't worth our forgiveness. Don't act like it's only me. Ain't only me. Yeah, I feel like, uh-uh, uh-uh, they run out this time. I ain't forgiving them for that. They gone too far. And you write, and you know you write in the situation, and it hurt. But when we pray, we say, Father, forgive me of my sins as I forgive those who sin against me. Listen to what comes first. Forgive me of my sins, that's second. As I forgive those who sin against me. That's first. So what happens if you never forgive those who sin against you? Because that's the first step in the process. Before receiving God's forgiveness. Forgiveness is for you. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. And I will repay. As believers, our job description is to walk in forgiveness. Amen? Serving others in humility and striving for peace in all relationships. One of the things I had to learn, because if you know me long time, you know I'm very quick on my mouth. I have an answer. If you think it, I have an answer for it. You haven't got to say nothing. If I see the expression on your face look wrong, I can address that for you. Let me sort what out going on on all the little people in your head. I can sort all of y'all out one time. The whole crew, all of y'all, who up in there? Out all of y'all fire one time. Psh, throw the water. One of the things I had to learn and I have to constantly say to myself is that a kind answer turneth away wrath. In so much that when I sign letters, I now say, kindness, principal knows. I signed it by saying kindness. And that is my way of always R reminding myself that a kind answer turn it away right because let me tell you something some parents you have to deal with there's almost course you have to get saved every Sunday I, I, I telling y'all 
I, I, and it's only, it's only September. Like, y'all ain't serious. And so, it is, it is not, it is not uh, 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 by my nature to be calm and subdued. I, I am just not that. I had to groom myself with a lot of personal and professional development to get to that point. That is my daddy child. And he is his daddy child. I, I, I can't help that. I straddle. I think my mommy say I better now. She say I better now. Praise the Lord. That's, a te- that's my testimony. You know, so I started to sign kindness. Because a kind answer turns away wrath. And sometimes when you cannot find that kind answer, listen to me, use the power of the pause. Before you open your mouth, just pause. And say, Holy Spirit, what you want me to say? Because the little voice on my left shoulder, dying the right voice. So let me come, let me step into the light before I answer. What do you want me to say? How do I respond? Use the power of the pause. Amen? Obedience also involves spiritual disciplines such as prayer, fasting, and studying scripture to discern God's voice. By making Christ's teachings a priority, individuals can grow in holiness, reflecting the character of Christ in their daily lives. This lifestyle of obedience strengthens faith, shapes character, and prepares the soul for eternity, where love and devotion to God will be fully realized. Let's go to our last checklist item. Travel checklist item number five. Rely on the Holy Spirit for guidance. Rely on the Holy Spirit for guidance. John 14, 16 through 17. In John 14, 16 through 17, Jesus promises his disciples the Holy Spirit saying, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is not just a temporary guide, but a lifelong companion for believers, providing comfort, wisdom, and direction. As people prepare for their eternal home, relying on the Holy Spirit is essential for living a life aligned with God's will. The Holy Spirit's role is to illuminate truth, convict hearts and empower believers to live as Christ taught. He provides insight in moments of uncertainty, helping others, helping believers discern God's will when faced with difficult decisions. The Spirit also strengthens the faith of those who are weak, enabling them to overcome temptations and endure trials. Relying on the Holy Spirit means staying sensitive to his leading through prayer, meditation, and reading his holy scriptures, and a heart open to his promptings. It's through the Holy Spirit that believers receive spiritual gifts, which can be used to serve others and advance God's kingdom. By de- Depending on the Holy Spirit for guidance, people can navigate life's challenges with divine wisdom and power, preparing their hearts for eternity with God. Amen. I can stand before you with eloquence of speech and discuss principles of business success and techniques for snowballing your way out of death, but Matthew 6, 19 through 21 says, 
Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I know that there are those who would prefer to hear techniques for accumulating wealth. But after I started setting goals that I thought were big goals, and then actually accomplishing them, I realized one thing. This is a temporary assignment. 2 Corinthians 4 and 18 reads, While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. If I only have one shot at explaining to you the way home, I choose to encourage you to make sure that your calling and your election is sure. I choose to encourage you to be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. The songwriter says, in times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. In times like these, you need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. For this rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock and so in my closing as this sweet laugh between my mother and I was turned into a sermon and she said you better know the way before you can lead the rest of us I can stand before you with all boldness and declare in times like these I have a savior in times like these, I have an anchor. I'm very sure. I'm Marlin Janesta Hill knows. I am very sure that my anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus. The only one. So if anybody sees my mom, please let her know that her first girl child said, I'm very sure, I'm very sure that my anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Come on and give God some praise in this place. I'm very sure. Does your anchor hold? And does it grip the solid rock? Maybe another time I can come back and talk about some other stuff. But today, if God only gave me one opportunity, this is the message that I want the world to hear. The message of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want you to stand and we're going to pray together. We're going to pray together. Put that to the overhead for me, please. Hallelujah. I'm very sure. I'm very sure. My
pray with me? Heavenly Father, I come before you today with a humble heart, recognizing my need for your grace and forgiveness. I confess that I have sinned and fallen short of your perfect will for my life. But today I turn away from my sin and choose to follow Jesus, your son, who died for me and rose again to give me new life. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the way, the truth, and the life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross, where you paid the price for my sins. Cleanse me, forgive me, and make me new. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and lead me in your ways. Teach me to walk in your truth and live a life that honors you. Father, I place my trust in you, knowing that you have prepared a place for me in your eternal kingdom. Help me to grow in faith, to follow your word, and to share the good news of salvation with others. Guide me, protect me, and fill my heart with your love and peace. Thank you for your mercy and the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's give our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your I go and grips the song. 